Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about understanding that what is now proved was once only imagined. The truth is, whether it was some of the greatest inventions in the world, like the aeroplane, space travel, or the latest technology, what they all have in common is that they all started with a brilliant spark of genius, then developed into an idea, and then was made a reality and proven. This means that if we can envision an idea, whether it's innovating a product or simply envisioning the life of our dreams, then it carries with it the possibility to make it a reality with a strong belief, innovation, and importantly, hard work. After all, as Walt Disney so brilliantly said, if we can dream it, we can do it. Walt Disney was living proof of that. Today, what was once perceived as crazy ideas or impossible are now some of the greatest luxuries and conveniences that we enjoy today. Remember, our minds have the unique ability to work with our imagination to visualize any sort of reality we desire to create. It's then up to us to make it a reality. As W. Clement Stone quotes, whatever the mind of a man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. Guys, you've worked with some incredible artists like Demi Lovato, Fetty Wap, U2, uh, you even toured with the Chainsmokers. What's been your most memorable collab to date and why? Ooh. Um, I think, uh, I mean, working with U2 was really cool. It was definitely not one of our biggest songs, but it was a really cool um, just process of being able to work with, with Bono so closely and talking with him and just somebody that's, you know, accomplished so much and has changed music for what, uh, as we know it. Um, <laughs> uh, it was pretty memorable uh, with Tinashe on Lean On Me. Absolutely. Was cool. Yeah. He's pretty down to earth and real funny and like chill, chill vibes. Um, I'd probably say uh, uh, Lee Bryce. Working with Lee Bryce has been cool because it's been cool to see like how the country lifestyle is and like how these like country stars do it. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have American electronic music DJ trio consisting of Kevin Ford, Trevor Dahl, and Matthew Russell of Cheat Code. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing today? <laughs> We're doing, doing good. good. It's a crazy good. morning. How you doing? <laughs> it has been a crazy morning. I'm so happy to have you guys. I'm such a big fan. So it's really a pleasure. So thank you so much for joining us today and making this happen. <laughs> of course. Thank you for having us. So guys, let's take it back to the very beginning and how you kind of cross paths. I know that Trevor and Matt, um, you guys used to live together. So talk to us about the whole journey of how you guys met. Um, we met uh, a long time ago. I guess it's been like more than 10 years now at this point. Um, uh, we were playing a show in St. Louis at a pizza place when we were young. I was 16, he was 18. Um, we had met briefly and then uh, I came to LA a couple years later and he had been living there and uh, I needed a place to stay. So we lived together off and on and uh, um, he had worked on his music, I was working on mine and eventually we uh, worked on music together. When him and Kevin started working on some music together and. Um, one day we got together and it just kind of happened naturally. We made a song together and from that day on, we just kind of been releasing music consistently. Yeah, and, and let's talk about the name Cheat Codes. I know that it was inspired by Kevin's little brother. So talk to us a little bit about the symbolism yeah. behind it. Well, they're not really little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's actually my big brothers. My okay. older brothers. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, the whole symbolism behind it is basically like, you know, uh, like we have like the cheat code of life like you can't think of things as being you know too hard and like can't be too hard on yourself you always have to like you know go after what you want to get you know um and we think of like things as being you know easy as opposed to, to being hard um but yeah the name came from my brother um pretty much when i was telling matt a story about them playing madison square garden back in the day and then uh, matt's like yeah that should be the name that's amazing and what does you know, finding the cheat code of life mean to you and success? I want to ask all of you that question because you guys have been really successful. Oh, thank you. Um, to me, it just means, uh, you know, kind of, you know, skipping to the fun parts, kind of, in, kind of avoiding the things you don't really want to do and just try to make, try to enjoy the, the things you're doing, especially with music, you know, it's like, 
it's definitely a business, but we want to enjoy the fact that we're doing music as, a, as our careers, you know, so I'm just having fun with it, not getting too stressed out about it, um, enjoying the process as well as, you know, not just the rewards like or the accomplishments, but enjoying the process as well. And uh, um, yeah, don't don't think you have to. Uh, it's one of those things where people think they have to like uh, put in like for it, for it to be hard for it to be successful, but you can have fun while you're doing it too. So that's yeah. it for me. <laughs> I think that's really important. I think people get so wrapped up in just getting things done and hitting op uh, sorry hitting milestones, but then they don't really enjoy the process. So I think that that's really good advice is to enjoy yourself while you're reaching success. Matthew, what does that mean for you? Um, you know, finding the Chico to life and success. And Kevin, you're next. I'm going to ask you that as well. Hmm. Uh, I just think like loving what you do, you know, because most people, they work like a majority of their life, they spend at their job. So it's like, if you can't enjoy what you're doing, then what's, what's the point? Like if, you know what I mean, if you're just working for the weekend, it sounds like a pretty horrible life. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And Kevin, what about you? Um, I think uh, the cheat code of life for me is, um, yeah, kind of like what Trevor's saying, having fun. Um, and just like you know, not really giving a giving an f about you know offending anyone or worrying about anything. Yeah, I think that's that's all very what? true <laughs> and all very useful information. Guys, you've worked with some incredible artists like Demi Lovato, Fetty Wap, U2. Uh, you even toured with the Chainsmokers. What's been your most memorable collab to date, and why? Um, I think. Uh, I mean, working with U2 was really cool. It was definitely not one of our biggest songs, but it was a really cool um, just process of being able to work with, with Bono so closely and talking with him. And just somebody that's, you know, accomplished so much and has changed music for what, uh, as we know it. Um, it's really cool to be able to work with people like, you know, that influential and that um, just, just like successful and uh, know what they're doing and passionate about music. And um, so for me, that was a really cool experience. Yeah, absolutely. What about you two? Who's been the most memorable collab to date? Have you been nervous to meet anybody? No. Um, nah. Yeah. No. That's good. Yeah. Cool. Uh, it was pretty memorable uh, work with Tanache on Lean On Me. Absolutely. That was pretty cool. Yeah. It was pretty down to earth and real funny and like chill, chill vibes. Sometimes like working with a big like pop artist can they can be kind of like uptight or like the kind of control a certain way but she was pretty easy going so I like that yeah absolutely and Kevin what about you um I'd probably say uh, uh Lee Bryce working with Lee Bryce has been cool because it's been cool to see like how the country lifestyle is and like how these like country stars do it mm-hmm yeah, absolutely. And you guys have such a creative style of music. I feel like you guys can fit into any genre. So how would you describe your musical style and what inspires it? Um, I think that's always been like the goal since we started being able to like make different styles of music without being put into a box. So it's hard to really pinpoint what like our specific style is. I think you, when you hear a song that's a cheat code song, you know it's a cheat code song, whether it's country or pop or dance or whatever we kind of put our flavor into it but um we've always been able to we've always wanted to be able to work with different styles of artists and go from country to alternative to whatever so um yeah it's, it's fun it, we get bored really easily and especially as a producer you want to be able to like you don't want to make the same song a million times it's not very inspiring mm -hmm. um so for us it's being able to like because we like all different types of music we're not just stuck in a box as far as like our influences we like a million different things so we like to be able to pull those influences and in, into our music and work with different sounds and different instruments and create something special and unique so it's mm -hmm. kind of always been the goal absolutely and what about you guys um yeah i think i, I just get inspired by working with these guys honestly because we all listen to different kinds of music so it's like we have different ideas than we, we would normally come up with on our, on our own so so yeah i mean I don't really uh, like to listen to one genre. I like to just kind of like go with the flow and see what comes out of it. But also just like trying to do a collaboration that is like a different genre than we normally work with. I feel like always brings up new out new ideas. Like we, we just did a country record with Lee Bryce. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we've never done country music before. And it's like hearing their perspective and how they go with the lyrics and like to tell stories and stuff like that is, is inspiring for sure. 
Yeah, and speaking about that, let's talk about How Do You Love. It's a huge song right now on Spotify and all over the world. So let's talk about this collab and a little bit about the lyrics of the song as well. Let's start with you, Kevin. Yeah, it's, it's, I love it. You know, uh, I think it's <laughs> turned out great. It's been like super dope working with uh, Lee and Lindsay. Uh, they're super, they're super talented. And um, yeah, I think how everything came out and sounds great. And yeah, I hope you guys all love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what do you think the key to your success has been? Because there are so many groups and artists and, and you know, they're successful for a little bit and then they fall off. So what do you think the key to your success has been? I want to ask all of you that question. If you can name three traits that you think that has made you successful. Let's start with you, Matthew. Um, I was just going to say, I mean, there's definitely like a lot of artists that they get like a, a couple of big songs and then they kind of like fall off. And I think part of it is like 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 a like burnout ends up happening like you it's there's a lot that goes into this that maybe people don't see like behind the scenes like yeah. there's like years of work that goes into an artist before they even have that first big record so then for from an outside looking in you're like oh they they were only around for a little bit but like really they were around for much longer so i think if you can just take it day by day and just put in the work every day and realize that it is a marathon it's not a sprint then you're going to have more longevity you know mm -hmm. um, so i think that's something like that we do is like well was like cool we put out this record let's let's do another record cool we played the show let's do another show and let's just like keep it moving um you know that way we don't just get exhausted and, and bored or tired or want to quit <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah and trevor what about you what do you think the key to your uh, success has been um i think it's just uh I think well, part of it goes back to that what we were talking about earlier, as far as enjoying the process, enjoying what you're doing, because I think that a lot of people they, they put too much pressure on specific things, or like if it, once I release this song, like it has to get this big, and if it doesn't, then you just feel like a failure. And it's like you, you can't be, you have to enjoy what you're doing and, and just just keep moving and to keep releasing music, and you never know which one's gonna work, you never know which one's not gonna work. So you just gotta trust your gut as far as you know doing the things you like doing, putting out the music you like making. Um, and just being resourceful and not really waiting for anybody else. I think a huge part for us is since day one, we've never really waited around for somebody else, somebody else to tell us it's okay to do something or not to do something. Yeah. Um, we've mm -hmm. always been releasing music since we started. We really released music consistently. Um, you know, we figured out ways to make art by ourselves. We figured out ways to make music videos with with friends with like literally zero budget or like little to nothing. Um, so it's one of those things where like a lot of people. I think the problem, just because we've been doing it for so long, we've seen a lot of friends or other artists or whatever that, you know, if one thing doesn't work out, they they, yeah. they feel stuck or they feel like they hit a oh, hit a wall. When really it comes down to you being able to you know keep moving forward and keep pushing along, putting out more music and putting out more visuals and whatever else. So just being resourceful and not taking no for an answer. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's great advice. And Kevin, what about you? Yeah, I'd say just you know always stay consistent and. Um, don't ever be uh, scared to experiment, you know, and always try new things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what else are you guys currently working on? What can fans expect from you guys? Ooh, well, we're working on part three of our album. So uh, Hellraiser, our album, is a three-part album. We've already released part one and part two. The first part was very dance. second part was very alternative uh, pop punk. And the third part that's coming out is going to be very uh, dance and clubby. So um, we're really excited about that. There's a lot of music on it. It's going to be like anywhere from like 15 to 20 songs. Wow. <laughs> so, nice. um, yeah, it's a lot of music, uh, really cool songs we're excited about. Um, and we're also working on more country music, something that we haven't really done much of, but something that we're really excited to dive into. Um, some really, really cool features that we can't really announce yet, but people uh, in the country world that would um, blow your mind, I think. We're really excited about working with them. So, um, yeah, so just a lot of music. Um, and we're always, you know, talking about what other styles of music we want to work on and um, like what genres can we, you know, um, experiment with and what kind of artists can we uh, make music with. And so we're always kind of trying to push it forward. But that's kind of what we're working on right now. Awesome. I'm excited for that. And last but not least, I created this platform to inspire our viewers um, and showcase success stories like yours. So, you know, for any of your viewers going through a hard time, we have a lot of young people, millennials watching our show, maybe going through a hard time, really trying to make their dreams happen, but it's just not happening for them. Maybe they're on the verge of giving up. What would you say to them? Let's start with Kevin. I would say, um, 
Don't give up. Only babies give up. <laughs> yeah, don't be a baby. <laughs> I like that. And, uh, and... Mine would be mine would be uh, hard work beats talent. You know, so it's one of those things where a lot of people, if you're like a good singer, or like you're good at one thing, you're like, well, some people feel entitled to the, the think that they're supposed to be like found or something yeah. or I don't know what it is but it's one of those things where the people that I've from my experience people that work hard the, one, the people that put in the time put in the effort um, are the ones that succeed in the long term so yeah. you got to put in the time you got to you got to really work for it it's not going to it's not going to fall into your lap no matter how good you are or how yeah. good you think you are <laughs> Absolutely. There's so many talented people, right, that just never make it. But it's all the people that are hardworking that just keep grinding every single day that, you know, they eventually see success. So I, I agree with that. And yeah. And Matthew, what about you? Uh, I think if you're like on the verge of giving up something that you really love doing, then you probably have a lot of resistance towards it. Meaning like, you're like, oh, I want this, but like you're adding that but in there. And I think that you need to drop the resistance, like you need to meditate or take a nap or something like that. Because I think a lot of the big successes that we've had that are like magical kind of moments, it's when there's like little to no resistance in what we're doing. Like we're just creating for fun, like our song Sex, for example, that became this like viral thing. Like everything about it was just like fun, the idea of it, the track, us releasing it, there was no we weren't trying to do anything. There was no uptightness about, oh, it needs to do this, it needs to do that. It was it was just a free flowing thing. So I think you have to, like when you're talking about creativity and creating something, it has to come from that place. It can't be like forced, it can't be, you can't look at like making art or music the same way that you look at like, oh, I'm clocking in to like a nine to five job. Like it can't, yeah. it's not the same. Yeah, you know absolutely. What I mean? You can't just be like, "Well, I put in these ten hours; it should be a hit." It's like, okay, but it needs to it needs to flow from that creative space. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, and you can't really care, as you said. Like, you have to enjoy the process and not what care care what people think because when you do things organically and because you like it, then you know you kind of convince others as well because people can see that you enjoy it. But thank you guys so much for being on the show today. It's been such a pleasure. I'm honestly such a big fan. When you guys come to Toronto, I hope to meet you and do an in-person interview. But thanks for making this happen and congratulations all of you on all your success. Thank you, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.